rock plans to close a camp housing exiled Iranian dissidents, uh, dissidents who oppose the regime in Tehran. That word comes just days after uh, nearly three dozen Iranians were reportedly killed there in a confrontation with Iraqi security forces. Brian Todd has been working the story at a initial report on it the other day. Uh, there's more information coming in and it's raising all sorts of questions, not only about the Iraqi government in Baghdad, the government of Nouri al-Maliki, right. but the U.S. government as well. That's right. More questions and also some new pictures, Wolf, pictures that we have to warn viewers about that could be some graphic images for some viewers. You know what happened at this camp? Still a big point of contention between those dissidents and the Iraqi government. The move to shut the camp down comes as the Iranian dissidents release video they say is of victory victims of Friday's incident, video which, again, we should warn you, could be disturbing to some viewers. A grisly new video set to classical music, purporting to show victims of a massacre at a camp for Iranian dissidents, a camp inside Iraq. The Iraqi government now says it will shut down Camp Ashraf by the end of the year. It's been there 25 years as a place to shelter Iranians who have long opposed the regime back home. The last straw, early Friday, a deadly confrontation between Iraqi forces and the Iranians who live there. The Iraqi government is responsible for the uh, massacre of these uh, unarmed, defenseless uh, residents. The dissidents, known as the People's Mujahideen of Iran, posted videos online of what appear to be Iraqi troops shooting at crowds, and at least one case of a military vehicle ramming into a man. CNN could not confirm that the videos, which are edited, were filmed at the camp. We also can't verify the authenticity of this video, provided to us by the Mujahideen, of two dozen bodies they say are victims. The dissidents claim 34 people were killed. The Iraqi government says only three died, and says the dissidents provoked the fight. A CNN team visited this camp after the incident, but was prevented from speaking with the dissidents. Now, with the plan to close Camp Ashraf, the 3,500 people who live there are on edge. The People's Mujahideen is concerned that once the Iraqi government shuts down that camp, they'll expel the people inside it to Iran, which for many of them might mean execution. In a phone interview with CNN, Iraq's ambassador to the U.S. said that won't happen. You know, there is no intention on the part of the Iraqi government to send any uh, of the um, residents of Camp Ashraf back to Iran against their will. But the dissidents have long made this claim against the Iraqi government, which has recently had a much improved relationship with Iran. The Iraqi government is doing the bidding of Tehran and wants to massacre these Iranians who are a thorn in the mullah's side. The Iraqi government denies that. I asked analyst Ray Take about it. What, if any, involvement does the Iranian government have with respect to the dealings uh, on that camp? I don't think Iranians are operationally directly involved in, uh, in that particular camp. However, Iranian government has insisted that these individuals represent a threat to it and they should be expelled. The Iranian, Iraqi, and the American governments all formally consider the People's Mujahideen to be a terrorist group because of its targeting of Iranian officials in the past. A State Department report also says the Mujahideen helped Saddam Hussein crush a Shia rebellion in southern Iraq in 1991, which is a key reason why the current Iraqi government has such a grievance with those people in that camp. The Mujahideen denies ever doing that with Saddam Hussein. Wolf. What's the latest on this other aspect, uh, that there were U.S. military personnel at Camp Ashraf and they suddenly left just before the Iraqi military moved in? The Iranian dissidents are sticking to their claim that an American military unit was there just in the hours before this incident occurred, and they claim that they were ordered to leave by their commander in Baghdad, despite objections from an American commander who was on the ground there. We contacted U.S. forces in Iraq over this again today, and they say, a spokesman for the Iraqi, the U.S. forces in Iraq says, that is completely untrue. He says there was an American unit there the day before the attack doing routine checks, as they often do in that camp, but he says the commander made no requests to stay in the camp, and he says they had no indication of what was going to happen the next day. I know you'll stay on top of this story for us. Thanks very much, sure. Brian Todd. Uh, as